Hi everyone, this is Nomi. Uh, I apologize for not uploading a video for such a long time. Um, my kids are home, you know, it's the summer holidays, so I really haven't had a quiet moment in the house. Um, so now I am sitting outside in the August heat, so if I start sweating I apologize. Um, and today is the 31st of August 2016, so that is nearly two and a half months post-surgery. Um, I had the lumbar fusion on the L5-S1 disc uh, about almost 10 weeks ago. Um, and generally I'm doing really well. I, if I had managed to upload a video at two months, which is what I was intending to do, this would have been perfectly positive because at that point until last Monday I was feeling fabulous I, I, I wasn't experiencing any pain I wasn't on any pain medication um, the only time I did experience pain was if I had a day where I'd been standing for seven eight hours or more uh, cooking or whatever if I had a really busy day like that then my back lower back would ache but other than that I was fine um, unfortunately last Monday I decided to go to the gym to do my walking on the treadmill um, up until then I had been just walking around my lounge I'd kind of made like a track around my lounge and when my kids weren't around for about an hour I would walk for about 50 minutes uh, most days and uh, that would be my exercise but you know it gets very tedious and I felt like you know I feel so good I want to go back to the gym um, I really am very eager to get back into shape because prior to the surgery I couldn't really exercise for over a year um, with the back pain and I had some other health issues last year and another surgery so I've just you know I've gained weight I'm out of shape so I'm really eager to get back into shape and I was told I was able to go on the treadmill but you know on the treadmill you are not in control of the pace as much you know when you're walking in the street or in the house or wherever if you start feeling achy you just slow down naturally but I was kind of pushing myself on the treadmill and I think I overdid it um, my body it I was aching but I thought that it was possibly because of you know being out of shape so I just sort of you know pushed through it I did about 20 minutes on the treadmill then I, I tried to go on the on the stationary bicycle for I did about five minutes but that actually really hurt my back so I went back onto the treadmill for another 20 minutes at about just under six I'm not sure if it's kilometers or miles per hour actually on my treadmill but it was fairly fast paced and I actually have been in a lot more pain since doing that I, immediately I was in pain and it, this is like eight days later I've still been experiencing more pain than I had at that point. Now, it's not terrible pain, um, and it's not constant. Like right now, I'm sitting down. I'm not in any pain right now at all. Um, but when I walk around for an hour or two, I, I'm i in more pain than I was before I did the treadmill. And I also, I'm kind of, um, I find myself quite stiff now when I wake, get up in the mornings. It, it's sort of I'm more stiff getting out of bed I'm a little bit more pain um, so hopefully I didn't do any real damage there hopefully it's just inflamed um, from doing too much activity I don't know but I think what one should learn from it is that you know at around two months if everything is going well you really feel good like I I'm not I wasn't in pain and that's the, the point where you really have to remind yourself to be careful still because even though you're not feeling the pain constantly your body is still healing it's you know you, d you haven't got a solid fusion yet and um, you need to be very patient with yourself not to overdo it because it's just a shame to regress and backtrack and possibly damage the work that the surgeon's done so um, some things you still have to be really careful about obviously exercise you're supposed to walk every day but you the surgeon said to me I saw him just after I went to the gym and he said you know you do not at this point 
push yourself or say, you know, yeah, just another mile, just another, you know, if, you're, if you don't feel, if you start feeling achy, stop, listen to your body because it's more important at this point to let everything heal than to lose that, you know, how many kilos you want to lose. I'll, I'll just have to be patient and once I have a solid fusion, I will, you know, put in a lot of effort to losing the weight and getting back into shape properly. Um, also around the house, there's housework that you just can't do. Um, I still can't do laundry because you can't bend and put stuff into the, you know, into the machine and carry heavy loads out from the machine. Um, so I have other people doing the laundry for me and I can, you know, if somebody puts the wet laundry on a table next to the, the laundry horse, I can hang the stuff onto it. Um, I can cook. But I can't do much cleaning still. I can't wash the floor or had I, you know, if I had carpets, I wouldn't be able to vacuum because there's still twisting and stuff involved in that. Um, I can't load the dishwasher. I can do the dishes by hand. Um, so you just have to be careful, you know, especially as, as I said, you know, hopefully as well as everything is going as it should be, you're not really in pain and your body's not reminding you. So you have to remind yourself, like when I'm cooking and baking, sometimes you know i just i want to get on with it and if there's not someone there i will i'll i'll bend down at the knees but pushing things into the oven and carrying them lifting them out of the oven even if you bend at the knees there's a certain strain on your back and and i always get backache after i've done that so it's better to ask for help uh, from the people around you um so that's all very important um hopefully you will feel as i I was feeling at eight weeks where you just feel like you could do anything which is fantastic but remember that you still have to be very careful um, I'm still feeling pretty good as I said this pain is sort of background and achiness it's nowhere near as bad as it was beforehand so I, at the moment I'm extremely positive about the surgery it was it, as long as I obtain a solid fusion I should have done it years ago just like <laughs> Everyone said for me, you know, there was no need to suffer for so many years and not do the surgery. Um, the only problem or post potential problem or issue would be if, if I don't obtain a solid fusion. So there's no way of knowing yet. Um, I see my surgeon next at four months, so that's another like month and a half. And I'm going to him after having a, an x-ray and hopefully... I will have a solid fusion, so fingers crossed for that. Um, now, I said that I would give you an update about sex after fusion. Um, the first update was at three weeks, um, and for about another four weeks after that, the only position I felt comfortable doing was what I was doing at three weeks, which was sort of lying flat on my back with my husband kind of perpendicular to me at my legs and not putting any pressure on my body at all and it was very gentle so we carried on using that position for about three four weeks quite you know after a while we kind of scissored our legs you know just slightly changed the angle but still kept it fairly um fairly gentle this week uh from around i guess two months we've actually we have tried the missionary position, which was fine with him on top, as long as he wasn't putting too much pressure or being too, you know, too aggressive. Um, at one point, he was being a bit more forceful, and I, it was starting to hurt my back, so I asked him to change position. And I was a little worried that that might have done damage, but actually, I wasn't in any more pain the next morning, so that was fine. I also find a really good position is, um, you know, lying like with him sort of spooning me um, from behind and uh, that doesn't put any pressure on my back and I can sort of comfortably lie on my side like that. So that was actually a great position. So I think that that will be a turn, a go-to position for a while. Um, unfortunately, you still have to be quite careful. Like you can't be jumping around or doing acrobatics or anything you know you can't be really carefree yet because until you have a proper solid fusion you just especially you know my my disc was right at the bottom of my back so 
I just can't be bashed around there. Um, so I have no idea how long that will take uh, until we can have that carefree sex, but I will let you know how it's going. But it is definitely better now at two months than at three weeks where we had to be so careful. It kind of took the fun out of it. Um, so there's that, and I will keep updating you about that. Um, I haven't gone back to work. I could go back to work. As I said, I am a teacher, and I was given the go-ahead to go back to work at, uh, at two and a half months, like tomorrow, basically, I was supposed to go back to work, but I actually decided not to teach this year. I am an artist as well, and because of, you know, my health issues, I have hardly been able to do work for the last few years and I really want to focus on that so the work that I am going to go back to will be my artwork which is actually quite strenuous physically it can be you know, it's a lot of bending and stuff so I'll let you know how that goes um I will be doing that in about a week because in a few days my husband and I will be going away I've been given a green light to fly and um, we're going to Rhodes, which is about an hour and a quarter flight from here. Um, so hopefully that will be fine. Um, I find sitting on regular chairs at this point fine, but I find sitting in the car quite uncomfortable still because I guess the position of the chair, you know, sitting lower down and my knees are sort of higher up. I can't drive for more than about 10 to 20 minutes in one go. Like I do drive locally, but I get quite stiff and quite painful sitting in that position for too long. So I haven't driven into city. So that's something to bear in mind. I can, I have taken the train into city and that's been fine, but stand, but sitting in my car driving, I can't do too long. So. I, I'm not sure what it will be like on the plane, so it's not a long journey, but those seats are not necessarily the most comfortable seats, so I imagine that worst case scenario I'll just stand for some of the flight. Um, I am a bit more concerned about the, you know, standing in line at the airport and stuff like that, so we'll see how it goes, but the doctor said for short journey I should be okay, and he wrote a letter to my insurance, uh, my travel insurance company saying the same thing so they've agreed to insure me which is great so i'll let you know how that goes hopefully it should be great um i've had my kids here non-stop for the last two and a half weeks and on friday they'll be going to their dad for five days so we're going away for those four nights so that's something to look forward to um and after that i will go to work i will start traveling into the studio that i just rented and um and hopefully that will go well so i will let you know um, other than that, there were, I wanted to give you a few tips, like basically just to go over the things that I thought were worth buying, um, before the surgery that I found really helpful. So one is the reacher, which is this like rod with a sort of a, re a thing that grabs stuff from the floor. That's very helpful. It's still helpful today. Uh, another thing is the stool in the shower I find indispensable because you know in order to wash your whole body and bend down to your legs you have to bend down as I said and you can't do that so I still sit in the shower and lift up my legs and wash my feet like that and shave my legs like that so that's really very helpful I would highly recommend getting a, a stool especially for the shower um, they sell them in mobility stores stuff like that and the third thing is something called a dressing stick, which I actually didn't get for the first month. I didn't know it existed. And then my mum found it online and brought it to me from England. And it's sort of a rod with a hook at the end that helps you to lift up, you know, your underwear or your trousers or whatever it is. So those things are definitely worth investing in. Um, if I've forgotten anything, if you have questions about things I haven't mentioned, um, please feel free to ask underneath. And uh, I'll give you an update in a few weeks, I guess, when I feel there's something worth saying. So until then, take care of yourselves and I hope you feel well. Bye.